U.S. Customs and Border Protection has the largest civilian air and marine forces in the world. It's proven use of the Predator-B unmanned aerial system to successfully patrol the skies of the southwest border is expanding. CBP recently demonstrated the UAS's capability to patrol the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida. As darkness approaches, technicians from U.S. Customs and Border Protection's Air and Marine Forces complete preparations for the launch of a revolutionary aircraft. Meanwhile, CBP Air and Marine pilots prepare to fly to mission 1,500 miles away near Fort Huachuca, Arizona. The aircraft is a Predator B, the same state-of-the-art unmanned aircraft system, or UAS, flown by the U.S. Air Force for surveillance and force protection overseas. The mission, to demonstrate that a UAS piloted from a ground station halfway across the country can spot, identify, and track potential threats along our nation's vast maritime border. Tens of thousands of miles of U.S. shoreline are potentially vulnerable to smuggling of narcotics, illegal aliens, and other terrorist threats. And that is where the Joint Maritime UAS demonstration, staged from Tyndall Air Force Base, plays a critical role in securing the United States. The demonstration had three main objectives. First, show that UAS technology can be integrated into CBP Air Marine and U.S. Coast Guard operations. Second, evaluate the law enforcement capabilities of a new maritime radar system in an actual maritime environment. And lastly, build a technical and cooperative foundation for a joint CBP Coast Guard UAS program office. So now having a better understanding of, of how Coast Guard, how CBP works, and, and I think it's great. I think there should be more of that. With advanced optics capable of viewing clear images of the ground from altitudes of up to 50,000 feet, the newer version of the Predator-B aircraft used for the maritime mission is the first unmanned aerial system to use the newest version of the Elta Sea Search radar. The maritime surveillance radar and electro-optical and infrared sensors have to be retrofitted and integrated into an original Predator-B aircraft. Then that aircraft and its mobile ground control station had to be packaged, transported to Tyndall Air Force Base via a U.S. Coast Guard C-130 transport aircraft, reassembled, and deployed along with its support team. There are administrative challenges also. The demonstration required close cooperation among CBP, the Coast Guard, the Air Force, and the FAA. We, on the other hand, have an urgent mission to secure the borders and prevent both uh, illegal air traffic and illegal ground activity from occurring that might threaten the public's interest. So there's a natural tension between us and the FAA, and it should be that way. And uh, I think in the end we'll find an accommodation that will allow us to accomplish our mission and still will preserve public safety and the confidence of, public, of the public in our predator system. It also required 13 major agreements and contracts agreements among DOD and civilian agencies for everything from airspace approvals to sensor frequency authorizations and airfield usage permits and contracts with the private sector for instrument integration and logistical support had to be drawn up and authorized. It all came together in March 2008. In a 10-day demonstration, the specially instrumented Predator B showed its potential for detecting and identifying marine targets. And on March 19th, it scored another first. That evening, when it took to air, a second UAV was launched from Arizona under the control of the team at Libby Army Airfield. Using KU band satellite communications, the two ground control stations were able to transfer control of their aircraft to each other. It marked the first time that CBP Air and Marine flew dual missions using satellite command and control infrastructure, an essential capability for a nationwide UAS program. Most important, the demonstration established working partnerships for developing and sharing the full potential of this technology. You, you can fly it for 30 hours with the crew on the ground and, and you can rotate specialists, payload specialists, pilots and sensor operators uh, in and out throughout that whole 30 hour period uh, and then you can launch another one uh, so you have seamless coverage over an environment that you want to look at and that's very, very appealing to a lot of different users in the government. 
Although a versatile tool for all types of missions, CBP's UAS program has and always will have one primary mission, to post high-tech sentries in the sky to protect our borders and strengthen homeland security. To learn more about U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP Air and Marine, or the UAS program, visit cbp.gov. Thanks for watching. I'm Michael Pope.